Welcome to another video and this time we are going to cover a series of very nice examples that you can build if you have an automation agency. So next few videos I will cover a couple of very nice SaaS solution that you can build. So these days vibe coding is becoming extremely popular. It has become a part of our life, isn't it? I don't think anyone will begin coding without the help of one of these tools. Okay, so vibe coding is coming in the form of desktop application. It's coming in the form of command line tools. It is also there in the form of completely functional editor in an IDE environment. Welcome to Techie Talks AI. I am Sri from Shogani. On this channel, we bring you hands-on demonstrations and insights into the latest tools and trends to help you get started with ease. Don't forget to subscribe and be a part of our journey into the future of technology. Okay, so now what is special about these applications, wipe coding applications, is the prompt that they use. That is extremely confidential. They have done extensive research in preparing a very elaborate prompt which is kept within their system. It's normally not revealed. So there are many articles and tweets on how these prompts are made. And here is one example that came out last week on what could be the prompt used within cursor, for example. And I personally don't think this is a cursor prompt leak because it is not possible to extract the prompt from an agentic system. So this is a very lengthy. So if you search for such a tweet, I will also place the link to this tweet in the description. You can access this tweet and see it for yourself. So what I've done is I've created a web application using Streamlit. Very simple application and this application is similar to all the previous examples that I have covered in my previous videos. So I have put this prompt and I have also used the MCP file system tool using which you can write files to the local folder. So combining these two, we will uh, create a tiny wipe coding mechanism. And you can work on it, build on it and make it more and more sophisticated. So the system block diagram wise, this is how it is going to look. So when the qu query comes in from the user, something related to coding, the big prompt will also be attached to it and any other tools that you would want like a syntax validation tool or file system tool that can come through MCP. MCP server based tools can come for support. In this case, I am using a file system, file system tool so that you can write the coding output to a local folder. Okay, so then the query goes to LLM and then it comes back then it uses the tools as needed. So all these are handled by the agent. And then finally, it will do what it's supposed to do and then acknowledge back to the user. Clear? So that is the idea. Let's get on with the demonstration. So here is the web application. This is a very simple application. There are only few lines, but when you build your SaaS solution, use this as an idea. Okay. So here, what I've done is the system prompt, I made it editable and I've copied the system prompt from the tweet that I've shown you. It's a very long system prompt, initial context setup. You are a powerful agentic AI coding assistant powered by Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. You can change this model as per your needs. Communication guidelines, be conversational but professional. Tool usage uh, guidelines, then code change guidelines, debugging guidelines, external API guidelines. So now when you look at these prompt examples, get the idea, you know, how sophisticated a prompt can be. So all these white coding solution providers, they have spent their time in preparing elaborate prompts. Here you can specify the folder where you can write the output. So what I will do is, I will prompt, can you write the factorial Python code called fact.py and save it to slash app slash app slash results folder. Okay, so let's see what it does. 
Okay, it's saying uh, it has created the fact.py file and saved it to the results folder. The code calculates the factorial of a given number. You can run it from the command line, providing a number as an argument. Okay, the factorial function recursively calculates the factorial. It handles negative inputs by raising a value error. The script can be executed directly taking a number from the command line as an argument. Okay, so it's, it has created this code based on our simple prompt, but it is also giving very detailed explanation how to use it. So now what we will do is we will look at the results folder fact.py. See, it has created this based on our prompt. Okay. So let's check it. Python results fact.py. Say I will give a number. Okay. So it is working. Let's, okay, factorial 50. So it generated a working code. So what we will do now is we will remove the prompt, detail prompt and mention please generate error free Python code. Okay. So the elaborate detail prompt we have removed and we are replacing it with a single line. Let's see what happens. I am saving it. So now what we will do is we will ask it can you create a Python based factorial program and save it to slash app slash app slash results folder as fact2.py. Let's see what it does. Okay, so this factorial program has been successfully created and saved as fact2 in the folder. Here is the code. Here it is giving a formatted code on the screen as well. So let's look at the fact2.code. It is similar code. Okay, so there is not much of a difference. In our simple prompt, it has not used a recursion. See this? The sophisticated prompt is calling the function within. Okay, but in our simple prompt, it has not used recursion. So, this is a tiny example of how a prompt can influence the results it generates. Okay, so now let us look at the code. This is a streamlit application. So, here I am creating the MCP server connection for the client. So, this MCP service HTD.io uses this node based file system MCP server. We have gone through similar code in our previous videos. So, this is an object that has a MCP server connection using the HTD.io transport. And then we create the agent. So, here we create the Pyrandic AI based agent where we specify the MCP server like this. So, this MCP server is used to save the created application to your local folder. So, because we are using a file system MCP server, we are saving the system prompt in a file and loading it. In the web UI, you can update the system prompt and it gets saved in this file. Path where the output should be written also is saved in this. In the MCP server connection, we are passing the path. So, the MCP server will write the application to that specific folder. So, this is the tiny example. The rest of the code is identical. There is no difference. By changing the prompt, this science solution can work in various scenarios. So, this is a wide coding scenario, but in the next video, we will see how we can build a science solution for students studying any topic. So, that is it for this video. Thank you for your time. Please give your valuable comments. And remember to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.